been officially welcomed yet, uh, I'll welcome you. My name is Brad McDonald. I'm the coordinator of the Building and Renovation Program. Building and Renovation Program happens in the in the building behind you and out in this yard. This is a second year, fourth semester students. This is a formwork project. It's a, a standard footing uh, foundation wall for a home. Um, typically it'd be twice as high, but do the first four feet, I'm pretty sure you can figure out the second four feet. <laughs> so they're working on that today. Inside are all the first year uh, shed projects uh, that they've been on and off working on. And in the back shop, and it's kind of crazy in there right now because we're, we're at the end of the year and everything's stacked up to get marked, uh, is the first or the second year shop where we do all the interior finishes and trim work and painting and flooring and all of that. Uh, but I guess you guys came out here to check this out. This is our wood miser. LT15. Um, it comes in a little trailer package so you can haul it behind your truck. It tows like a dream. It's got a 15 horse engine and all this thing basically is guys is a bandsaw on its side. All right, so it's got a, a blade that's maybe a little bit bigger than the bandsaw blades that you're used to. Uh, you lose a light eighth uh, every time you make a cut. So the kerf is actually pretty reasonable as compared to using a, uh, a standard sawmill or a stationary big sawmill where they use a big blade 3 16 to a quarter of an inch cut. And the finish of this cut's pretty good too. Um, we just have an old scrappy uh, chunk of wood here to, uh, to show you guys how it works. What's this work? Uh, this whole thing, because you get an institutional discount of uh, something 20%, uh, this whole thing with uh, 16 blades, some cant hooks, uh, the trailer package, those two ramps where I have the, the stack of uh, scrap here, they hook on that side and then this winch comes up. So we take the winch, we wrap it around the bottom of the log, it comes back and hooks into the winch area and you can crank logs up. So you see some really big logs over there. I'm not strong enough to lift them on you know, by myself. Uh, so we'll use the winch for that. So it comes with the winch, the logs, the cants. I got 16 blades. I think I got a pin, a hat, <laughs> and a fridge magnet for uh, for just about just under twelve thousand dollars. And is it? And this is like it stays outside. So it's yep. Yeah. And I just put a cover on it, and away we go. It's got two tracks that it, that it rolls on. Uh, it's a fairly simple machine. You can get, Woodmiser makes much more advanced machines, computerized and so on and so forth. This one works the best for us because it has almost no moving parts. Uh, you can choose to crank it forward as you saw with it. You can also just push it forward. That's what a lot of the, the sawmills out there have. It's a, it's a simple 15, uh, 15 horse gas motor. Uh, I picked the, the model that was the most durable uh, and had the least amount of moving parts that I would have to work on. <laughs> we teach wood technology uh, in building reno in third semester and then if you were to come back here for uh, your carpentry training you would get wood technology in your basic level. And in the past we've shown videos breaking logs apart in sawmills, well now we can come out and break a log apart and, and show you uh, the different parts. So that's cool and then we also have it for when high school groups stop by because it's noisy, it makes lots of sawdust, and it smells good. So we'll see if it, uh, if it wants to cooperate. Is it finish in some way? Um, 
if you guys can come around back here, I can show you some of the uh, some of the operating end. This big knob over here, this is our blade tension. So we can tension the blade, we can take the blade off of tension. When we put it to bed at night, we just take the tension off the blade. It's no need to keep the blade under constant tension in the bearings, so we pull it off. Other than that, uh, for transport and everything else, the tension stays on. This thing actually clicks in just behind the wheels. We just rest it down into two little dowels, one plug, and it has a separate motor cover that we put on. Take the water bottle off and down the road you go. So really easy, like about from the back of the truck to sawing wood, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. And you can set the thickness if you want four quarters, yeah, six quarters. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the, ne the next thing over here. We've got this, like your, your bandsaw in the shop, right? You want to control how much blade that you have so that you don't have blade wander. <coughs> this has the same thing. It's just on its side. Right, so we set it up as close to the log as we can get. We get nice uh, true cuts that way. This lever here engages the motor and the mechanism. So we pull it down, we let the motor get up to speed, the band uh, starts or the blade starts spinning, and we lock it into gear. And then up over here, what we have is our is our height adjustment. So we pull this lever and we can raise and lower however we want. What's kind of slick with this is it's got a, a ruler that's on there, but it's also got this magnetic one. So what I can do is once I've squared my timber up, so I'm ready to, to make boards. You guys know the difference between timbers and boards? The teacher's nodded. <laughs> timbers are, are anything four by four or bigger, okay? Dimensional lumber is uh, anything in around two inches. So all the stuff you're building with right now, if it's a two by four, two by six, two by eight, that's dimensional lumber. Anything less than that is boards. So this thing here, if I wanted to cut boards, this uh, center line, I can take it and I can move this magnet up or down until I see, let's say, a four line up with that line. Then I can continue dropping this down to the next four. That means I'm going to make a four-quarter board or a one-inch thick board. And it comes out to about an inch and sixteenth, uh, so it's perfect for, for milling. If I wanted to make five-quarter boards, so an inch and a quarter thick board, I move that up to five, I go from five to five. If I want to make six quarter, I go six to six. If I want to make eight quarter, so it's not I hard go eight to eight. Blade, uh, no, there's no real. This is a. What well, about a piece of maple or a I right cut. Uh, I had a couple of students cut down a maple tree. This thing will take a board up to 18 inches in diameter, and I think it was 17 inches in diameter, and it was in January. Frozen yeah, solid, yeah. and we hogged right through it. No really? problem. Yep. We, we switch ever... out in the winter time. We switch out water for uh, windshield washer fluid. And, and that's it. It just says, you know, and in the manual I was looking, Ooh, do I need special blade tension for frozen wood? It just says, just take your time. Now, with that 12,000, does that include some tutorials on that? Or? You know what? No. But, in saying that, the, uh, the manual is really good. Uh, if you YouTube Woodmiser, you've got three, four hours worth of fun. There's actually more Woodmiser video than I think porn anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Something the kids will watch. Uh, can this be used with a, uh, a double-edged blade so that you can do a pass to the left, drop it, pass uh, to the right? Not, no, that's not really an option in their in their catalog. Uh, they're kind of uh, they're kind of like Harley Davidson. You ever know anyone that's got a Harley, right? You buy a Harley and it costs you thirty grand, but all the accessories, after ten years of owning it, is another thirty grand. Yeah. These guys are kind of the same in the sense you can buy a simple saw like this, but they have attachments to do siding. They have attachments to do all sorts of, uh, of different things. So it's a uh, they're a pretty cool company. Uh, this one was purchased just outside of uh, Lindsay. So we went up to uh, Woodmiser Canada, just outside of Lindsay, and uh, and picked it up there. They're the local dealer. Uh, all the blades go back to them, but you get 500 linear feet of cutting for blades, blades and all. So it's uh, it's pretty good. Uh, we we monkeyed around a little bit figuring out blade tension, but once we had that done, then it's all about how you want to saw with it. So it must depend on what wood you're cutting, how many. Yes. 
it's like any other tool. So if you go in the, the wood shop and you say, you know, how many linear feet can I get out of that bandsaw? Yeah, there's a number somewhere, but the reality is, you know what, this blade is dull. Yeah. And it's the same thing here. You can feel it, you can hear yeah. it. And it, exactly like with a bandsaw in school, this thing, when it gets dull, it starts to dive. And when our blade tension becomes too loose, it starts to dive. So you see that, you feel it before anything ever happens, and then we just tune it up, and away we go. Changing the blade is really easy. So if you were... Well, we just did the first step of it right there. So right now, I, I took off the, the top, right? I set it up, I'm going to take off the side, I'm going to turn it one more time, square it up, take it one more time, and I'll be basically out of, out of six by six. And then from there, you can leave it, you can make boards, you can make dimensional, you can make timbers, whichever you want. You said you have to return the blades to the uh, manufacturer for sharpening? Yeah, they're a bit of a unique hook. They have that funny hook, yeah. hook on it. So, so can you shift those to them? Yeah. Oh, it is, it's the easiest. They're the easiest. They're like Harley. Oh, you want a you want a different seat? Here your options. Send it to us. We'll send you a new one. They're yeah. they're a really good company to deal with. Like that. Yeah, very good.